Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you just tuning in, my name is Caroline and I am shedding light on hair loss. So some of you may know I have alopecia and trichotillomania. There's a whole lot of hair loss complications going on over here. But today I'm going to be sharing with you guys something that's really personal to me, which is my trichotillomania story. I'm going to be talking to you guys about what trichotillomania is, um, just explaining what this feels like, and really just sharing my personal experience with this. So without further ado, trichotillomania is a BFRB, which means a body focused repetitive behavior. So some other BFRBs are things like skin picking, fingernail picking, etc. and trichotillomania. If you've ever heard the saying, I'm so angry I could pull my hair out, that's kind of what it's like, um, but I'm a lot less angry about it. BFRBs are, you know, along the spectrum of OCD, so there is some obsessive thoughts and compulsions. This is a mental health issue. So when I'm pulling my hair and someone says, stop pulling your hair, please just stop, you know, it's not a decision, it's a disorder. And um, this isn't something that I've chosen to do. So for me, like what it feels like when I have an urge, um, it can feel like really bad, um, <laughs> up to the point of feeling like my head is on fire if I ignore the urge. A lot of the time, um, trichotillomania, hair pulling can occur when you don't even realize it. Like, for me, I could just sometimes be pulling for like five or ten minutes before I realize that I'm even doing it. So a lot of this is very subconscious. If I feel a breeze, and it feels a little colder and I don't have as much hair protecting my scalp there, I'm like, oh no, I gotta check this out. <laughs> like, what if there's a huge bald spot there that I don't even know about? So up goes my hand and now I'm feeling around and kind of checking it out, um, checking, checking, checking. Oh, there's a huge bald spot here I didn't even know and there's like this one hair that's in the center of the bald spot. This urge it just compels me to feel like I have to pull that hair out. It's not like I think to myself, oh, I really want to pull this hair out. It's more just like my hands take care of it for me because if they don't, if I were to pull my hand down, my head would feel this sense of like pressure, this physical like phantom feeling of like my head is stinging, there's something on it. Um, it can be physically painful and the only way to release that feeling is to pull a hair out and that release does feel very good. Um, it's this little like pop of pleasure as I've kind of dubbed it, um, but it doesn't feel like that good. It's not like something I want to feel all the time. It's it's not something that I would sacrifice all of my hair for. So I just want to make it really clear that trichotillomania, hair pulling, it's not a choice. It's something that's ingrained deep in me on some deep mental level. Um, it's a mental health disorder and it's not my decision to pull my hair. My experience began actually um, rewinding back to when I was a baby. I see my trichotillomania as like a complicated link with my alopecia areata. So for those of you that don't know, alopecia areata is an autoimmune disorder. My immune system is attacking my hair follicles because they don't recognize them as cells from my own body. So my hair falls out in patches and my first little bald spot that we ever noticed um, was on the back of my head and I was 11 months old and that's when I was diagnosed and they kind of didn't know if it was going to be something that I would grow out of or if it would get worse. So when puberty came, of course, I was like really monitoring this situation. I'm thinking like, is it going to get a lot worse? Is it going to become something that I'm gonna have to like wear a wig for the rest of my life like imagining myself as a bald woman now I think I'd probably rock the look but as a younger kid I was thinking like that would be my worst nightmare because at the time my hair was like my favorite physical trait so um 
Come eighth grade, my hair loss actually did get a lot worse, and um, I started having these like big spreads of bald spots in the back of my head. I like to compare it to when you lose a tooth. It's like that that emptiness of the gum where your tooth used to be. It feels like so soft and weird because you're not used to feeling that and like all of a sudden like you just can't help but like rub your tongue over that and like as gross as it sounds I've got to believe that other people have experienced that weird feeling well um, when you lose hair your scalp when it's bald it feels really weird just like that like it's really soft um, it's not like you know your face or any skin anywhere else so anyway I was feeling around this big spot in middle school just really kind of monitoring this to see every day like okay, has it grown like am I going bald is this something I'm gonna be able to manage and um, I noticed that I had been actually breaking a lot of the hair off just from that feeling of the hair and then there was this this high level of guilt and shame that came with that because here I am like you know trying to grow my hair back and I'm just making it worse by feeling it and that kind of anxiety and that irony definitely triggered me pulling my hair out that that feeling turned into me pulling it's ironic because there is this anxiety that comes with the pulling where you know you're pulling your hair because you're anxious about something um, but then because you're pulling your hair or because you have pulled hair out and you can feel that it's thinning you're pulling your hair more even though pulling your hair is the opposite of what you should be doing like of course the correct solution would be to stop pulling but it's just not that easy like of course I want to stop pulling my hair anyway that's really like how I started pulling my hair out and ultimately, um, it did get worse when I was dealing with more stress. And I'm actually someone that, you know, I don't mind a little bit of stress. I'm an adventurer. I'm a risk taker. So, for example, I went abroad in high school um, for a portion of a semester to South Africa. And that transition, you know, big life transitions have been shown to be huge stressors in one's life. So um, there were a lot of transitions I was having to deal with, like navigating, moving to a foreign country for a couple of months, making all new friends, transitioning into their lifestyles and their classes. And when I got back from South Africa, I could see it in my dad's face that he could barely recognize me because I had so much more hair when I had left for South Africa than when I came back to America. And actually I think that that's a really big point to bring up in this. Is the biggest anxiety I feel like is the social pressures of feeling like, oh, can people tell that I've been pulling my hair? Are people watching me? Can people see my bald spots? And, and then like that's amplified by like something like this. I love this stuff. I've, you know, preached about this on here before. It's great spray to cover up bald spots, but then if you have an itch there or if you're pulling there, um, then you've got brown stuff all on your fingers and under your nails. You touch something and you leave a brown fingerprint. People are looking at you like, have you washed your hands this year? And <laughs> it's really embarrassing. The, the problem with trichotillomania is not even just that you're pulling your hair out, but you're creating a slew of other problems for yourself. And then there's, of course, the blame that comes with that. For a really long time, I felt like I really blamed myself. I looked at myself like this monster. Like, when I got back from South Africa, I didn't have enough hair to go to school without people looking at me like, what's wrong with her? Why? why is half her head bald? So I got a wig, but then I pulled out the hair in that wig. I got another wig and did the same thing. I had so much shame at that moment. We had spent so much money and I destroyed my own hair as well as now the hair of these two wigs. I felt like that was the lowest point for me and I truly looked at myself and called myself a monster on numerous occasions. And it's interesting because I've been dealing with alopecia my whole life as well, and I don't blame myself for that hair loss it, because I don't tell my immune system to go attack my hair follicles, you know, it's, it's not my fault. And that's inside of me. 
but the mental health issue is also inside of me. It's not something that I want to happen. Like I've said, it's something I really, really want to stop. And so lately I've actually started to be looking at myself through a lot more positive of a lens because I see my trichotillomania now in the same way that I see my alopecia. And I think people, even if you don't have alopecia, but you do have trichotillomania, you should see it this way as well, that it's not your fault. You are dealing with a mental disorder and maybe you're doing everything you can that's in your control to take care of yourself, um, to seek treatment. And even if not, this isn't your fault. This is trichotillomania. It's, it defies all logic. And you can rid yourself of that blame by just forgiving yourself. Once I had that sense of blame, you know, lifted from my shoulders, I started to really just accept myself. And I really recently started to see my trichotillomania as something that has challenged me and made me stronger and made me more resourceful, creative even. We don't have to keep looking at this problem as a problem. I mean, of course, it creates so many issues. The embarrassment of having brown stuff under my fingernails or sitting next to a pile of hair and then having to explain that or having to, you know, take my hair out at night and explain that to a roommate, like, why I don't have hair of my own. Those are really difficult things to deal with. But you are not a problem and you are not your trichotillomania if this is something that you're dealing with. And taking that blame away from myself has been so helpful. But yeah, I really wanted to share my story and explain more about what I've been dealing with. I think that there's such power in telling your story that I wanted to share mine here because it not only is empowering me, but I hope that it's educating people that don't know about trichotillomania and helping and inspiring people that do have trichotillomania to go out and share your story. For a long time, I felt very, very isolated. People didn't know how to talk to me when I was wearing a wig or didn't have a lot of hair in my head and didn't quite know how to hide it yet. People weren't sure how to approach me. Um, people didn't know what was going on with me. And uh, of course they didn't because I wasn't sharing my story and I wasn't really seeking other people's stories. So I think my biggest advice is to be open and to accept yourself and be proud of who you are and share your story too. And if you aren't someone that's dealing with trichotillomania, well, thank you for listening to my story. And I hope that if you ever see someone struggling with this, you can extend more empathy or help educate others because hearing and sharing and telling our stories is always going to be the key to ending these big stigmas around things that people just don't understand. So that's my story about trichotillomania, and I hope it's been somewhat helpful. If you're looking for a guide to help support others going through trichotillomania, what to say, what not to say, I have created that on my blog at hairmeout.com, and I'll also link that below. Thank you so much for coming. Please subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.